Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Marketing and Investment Conference of the Malta Blockchain Summit 2018, sponsored by BitStars. Opening keynote, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John McAfee. a telephone and a camera. Ah. I'm here to bring some good news and some bad news. When cryptocurrency first began with Bitcoin, it was an idealistic community with dreams of financial independence for the individual. Why is that dream so important? Because from financial independence stems all other freedoms and all other independence. Think about it. How are we controlled by the power structure that exists today? We are working for corporations, getting great salaries. We have houses and cars. We have everything that we want. But are you free? Are you free to quit right now, today, to call your boss and say, I quit, not coming back, and your life won't change? No, your life will change in ways that you do not want. One way to look at what we are as individuals compared to the power structure and those on the top as we are slaves. Maybe an ugly word, but it is the truth of our existence. We are slaves as long as our economy and our economic interactions are controlled by other people. And are they controlled? Can governments print more money whenever they choose? <laughs> Can they control interest rates, inflation and deflation? Can they monitor your purchases and tell you what you can and cannot buy and from whom? Try buying something from Iran. You'll have a hard time doing it. So the dream of economic freedom is a powerful dream. Do we still have that dream? Are you here today to learn how to make more money within the system that we are trying to escape? Or are you here to learn how you can be free as individuals? That's the question. I fear that most of you are here to learn how to use the blockchain and cryptocurrency to enrich your pockets. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm the last man in the world who would say, don't make money. However, if we choose to make money by being absorbed into that system which we allegedly are trying to escape, then what's the point? What is the point? We might as well accept the existing system and forget cryptocurrency. The stock exchange is down. You can invest in stocks at the bottom and make some money. Let's look at the truth of where we are. What distinguishes cryptocurrency from fiat? Number one, it is a peer-to-peer -peer transaction it is trustless and far more important, it is permissionless. Now, if you truly examine your lives today, where we are, you will have to admit that we are subservient 
to a power structure that we have willingly allowed to grow and take control over our lives. Governments. How many Americans are here? Enough, all right. Do you think the Founding Fathers in the 1700s actually believed that what the, we had created, that what they had created, would turn into the monster that exists today? where each of us work four months out of the year to support a government that does not serve us, the people. And America is not unique. Almost every democracy in the world suffers from this same problem. Why? There is a principle that I know is true, and I think you all believe it in your hearts, and that is that power corrupts. And that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Can you trust a corrupt system? No. I don't think so. So what are we doing today? Here in Malta, out of the goodness of the Maltese government's hearts, they are creating a crypto community which is accepted by, promoted by, and permitted by the government. I am thankful for that for one reason. It will allow our community to grow because it will have some degree of respectability. And hopefully other governments will do the same. But you must understand something. This movement into acceptance by governments, banks, and those in control can only be temporary. Because what is cryptocurrency? Number one, permissionless. And we are begging governments to permit us to use a permissionless system. See the contradiction, people. It is a trustless system because of the beauty of the mathematics that underlies and powers this system. And yet you want to trust an untrustworthy entity to permit you to use a trustless, permissionless system. This would be the definition of insanity if you were in a psychologist's office. So, sir, your problem is you um, you want a trustless, permissionless system, but you want someone that you cannot trust to permit you to use this system. You would be committed. Now, why did I say this is temporary? Because all the permissions in the world, all the regulations and laws and legislations, whoa, involving cryptocurrency will be totally meaningless as soon as distributed exchanges that are fully functional are available to all of us. Now, why is that so important? Because legislation only works if it can be enforced. Now, I'm looking around this room, I bet one or two of you have smoked marijuana. And probably you have smoked it at some time in a location where you were not permitted to do so. Your home, if you're in the United States, half, almost all of the states, you are not permitted to smoke weed. It is against the law. Has it stopped anybody? No. It stopped you? You raised your hand? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> if it did, come talk to me afterwards. <laughs> so, so why, why do you continue to do it? Because it cannot be enforced. Therefore, we just do it. How are we being forced now to accept regulations? Exchanges are centralized and located somewhere. 
I spoke in China, well, actually in Hong Kong last year, I was supposed to, to speak in Beijing, but just before we were due to have the conference, China outlawed cryptocurrency and shut down every exchange. Now, that didn't stop cryptocurrency. In fact, there's more cryptocurrency trading in China today than before the law was passed. Nevertheless, they did shut down in China those exchanges. If all governments acted unilaterally and shut down all exchanges, it would shut down us. Why? Because they can. A centralized exchange has an office, a set of servers. It is located somewhere and manned by specific people. Find them, pull the plug on the electricity, arrest all the people, break the machines with axes or set fire to the building, and we're down. But what is a distributed exchange? It's an exchange that runs on tens of millions of devices, your smartphones, your laptops, your desktops. It has no geographic location. It does not raise a flag saying, I am part of an exchange. No, it is fluid, ever-changing and ever-moving. Mathematically, technologically, physically, it cannot be shut down. Meaning what? Make whatever regulations you like. You may only use my cryptocurrency, which is generated by the American government or the Chinese government, or you must report all transactions, and yet you're using Monero, and who the hell is going to find out? No, how do you enforce it? Laws that cannot be enforced are meaningless. So what is happening here in Malta and in other countries with the, quote, acceptance of cryptocurrency, which is basically the regulation of cryptocurrency for the purposes of making us more real, less frightening, more available, which is perfect, in five years will mean nothing. You must understand this. Those of you who say, we must have regulations to protect those poor fools who fall for scams or can't read an entire white paper or can't Google a name to find out whether this person is real or not. And you want to protect them. Well, good luck with that. Because you can't. We cannot protect people from themselves. You must accept this because whether you like it or not, the mob will rule in the end. And the mob will say, okay, make what rules you want. I will buy what I damn well please and sell what I damn well please and say nothing to anybody, no matter what law you make, because I can. And if you can, you will. Those of you who believe that we are fundamentally, and have I gone over time? I have, am I over time? No. Those of you who believe that people are fundamentally honest and will do the right thing, you've been living in a closet or something, because that is not people. People will break the laws that they choose if they know that they can do so with absolute freedom wherever they choose, and you know this for a fact. We are loving, gracious, generous, hopeful, full of dreams, compassion. We are also jealous, envious, angry, fearful. We cheat sometimes and we lie. That is who we are. And that's who the mob is. And that is what will happen. We will do as we damn well please if we are able to do so. So keep in mind, the road that we are heading down, which is a, the epitome, is here in Malta. And thank you, Maltese government, because this will help grow the crypto community dramatically. And this, by the way, is one of the largest conferences I've keynoted. 
indicative of something that we are in fact growing. So this road that we are heading down, those of you who say we need regulations, we need some controls. Well, bless your sweet hearts. We may have some for a while, but we will not in the end, and you must accept this, or get out of crypto, because you will have no control. One's control from above is severed, because if that control is severed, then so is yours, so is everybody's. We are free, equal people in this world that bow to no one. This has been the dream of humanity since the dawn of time. Look at what you have in your friggin' hands, people. The gift of fire, one of the greatest gifts, if you want to call it a gift, changed civilization. But that gift will pale compared to the gift of the blockchain. Consider this, what if the blockchain had existed since the beginning of human civilization and had been used? Forget the impossibilities of it, just imagine. What is history now? It is a composition of tales told by conquerors. Totally omissing, with the total omission of the tales told by the subjected, by the conquered. Good God, what kind of history is that? It's the kind of history that happened in Mexico when Cortez, quote, conquered Mexico and burned hundreds of thousands of Mayan books, leaving only four, which are in museums now leaving us totally in the dark of that history and leaving us only the self-aggrandizing words of the conquerors. We came, we did this, these people were bad. Now they're good. However, had the blockchain been there, we would know exactly what happened and we would have a deeper understanding of history and a deeper understanding of ourselves in relation to our human history. That's the power of the blockchain. It is immutable. And it frees us from the age-old problems of deception, subversion, modification of events. In the end, as it's applied to all of you, you will have to change, and hopefully not in our lifetimes, but ultimately, you won't be able to lie anymore. I'm sorry. You have an affair on your spouse, she's gonna know, or he's gonna know the moment you come home, I'm sorry. Deal with it, learn to tell the truth. I do, it works. So, this is where we're headed. And please, God, get behind it. Because what is life without freedom, and do you have freedom now? Total freedom. Or are we mere puppets and sheep of those few in this power structure who rule the world through the manipulation of economies and currencies and financial transactions? See the power that they have? They don't really need militaries. The military is because this power-hungry person wants more than this power-hungry person, so I'm gonna kick your ass. Barring that, to control us? Do they need armies? When's the last time the fifth division invaded your home? No, we don't need them for us. They need only the control of our currency. For the first time in human history, we have the key to unlock our door for full control over what we deserve to have. I don't mean to be cynical about human nature, nor about the goodwill of nations like Malta, 
nor about any of your reasons for being here. I'm a practical man. We all want stuff, get stuff. But in the world of cryptocurrency, what you get, I do not care how much you collect, you will still have no power over me. You'll have power over your stuff. Well, good, you should have. But the rest of us, we could give a shit about what you want because you will have no power. Well, maybe if you invite me on your yacht and I want to go on the yacht, well, yeah, I'll say, okay, yes, good man, I'll do what you like, but no. No one has power over anyone. Can you see where that would lead? The ideal civilization that we have dreamed of for millennia, where we live through the heart and the mind connected together. Where all we need is the ability to do... I'm over? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay.